In March 2025, Microsoft dropped a bombshell. They were rewriting the TypeScript compiler in Go, promising up to a 10x speed boost for developers. This dramatic move left many asking, why would Microsoft rebuild their JavaScript-based tool in another language? The answer lies in TypeScript's remarkable journey, a journey that transformed how we build software. To understand the stakes, let's rewind to the beginning of the TypeScript story. Picture the web development world a little over a decade ago. JavaScript was everywhere, powering interactive websites and complex web apps, but it was bursting at the seams. As projects grew, cracks began to show. Developers would spend late nights chasing down runtime errors caused by something as simple as a typo or a missing property. But in a dynamically typed language like JavaScript, a variable's type could change on the fly, and there was nothing to catch a mistake until the code actually ran and possibly crashed. For small scripts, this was fine, but for applications with millions of lines of code, it was a nightmare. Managing large JavaScript code bases is challenging, admitted engineers at Slack, who found that a small mistake could crash an entire app. The JavaScript ecosystem desperately needed a tool or language to tame this chaos, to provide reliability and structure without throwing away JavaScript's flexibility. TypeScript was Microsoft's answer to this problem. It began as a quiet project deep inside Microsoft, an ambitious idea led by Anders Hilsberg to tame the wild world of JavaScript without stripping away its freedom. Anders and his team envisioned a superset of JavaScript that would add static typing and advanced tooling while remaining compatible with all existing JavaScript. In other words, every JavaScript program was already a valid TypeScript program. You could start small and gradually adopt types. This meant developers could opt in to stronger checks and catch errors at compile time instead of at runtime, all without abandoning the vast JavaScript ecosystem. Enders described his motivation simply, let's see if we can do a little bit better for JavaScript. That modest vision belied the huge impact TypeScript would soon have. At first, TypeScript was an ambitious experiment, essentially offering JavaScript at scale. But over the years, it won over the hearts of developers. What started as a niche project grew into one of the most popular languages in modern development. By 2017, just a few years after its launch, TypeScript had already become the third most loved technology in Stack Overflow's developer survey. Fast forward to today, and TypeScript frequently ranks among the top 10 programming languages in the world, used in everything from tiny personal projects to massive enterprise applications. This is the story of how TypeScript rose from a simple idea to transform web development and why it's still evolving to meet new challenges. As TypeScript provided developers with a robust framework to build scalable applications, understanding user behavior became equally crucial for product success. Enter PostHog, sponsor of this video, an all-in-one platform designed for developers to gain deep insights into user interactions. Imagine launching a new feature and being able to see exactly how users interact with it. With PostHog's session replay, you can watch real user sessions to identify friction points and improve user experience. Need to roll out changes gradually? PostHog's feature flags allow you to deploy new features to specific user segments, enabling controlled testing and smooth rollouts. Plus, with built-in experiments, you can test different variations and make data-driven decisions to optimize your product. PostHog seamlessly integrates these tools, empowering your team to build better products based on real user data. To get started for free, head to posthog.com slash codesource and make sure to tell them Codesource sent you. Just as tools like PostHog have become indispensable for modern development, TypeScript's early momentum set the stage for its widespread adoption. Let's explore how TypeScript's initial traction transformed it from an ambitious project into a development staple. A story begins at Microsoft around 2010, where a small team of engineers, including Anders Heralsberg, set out to solve JavaScript's growing pains. They knew that large-scale applications were becoming the norm and JavaScript needed help. The result of their work, TypeScript, was unveiled to the public in October 2012. It was a bold idea. A new programming language that looks like JavaScript, runs like JavaScript, but adds the safety of static types and modern language features. Crucially, TypeScript was open-sourced from the start, hosted on GitHub, signaling Microsoft's commitment to working with the broader developer community, a significant shift from the company's earlier closed-source posture. Early on, TypeScript faced a challenge, convincing developers it was worth adopting. At first, some were skeptical. Was this just another Microsoft experiment or a real solution? But TypeScript had a few aces up its sleeve. And as Heelsberg's reputation lent it credibility, developers jokingly called TypeScript and as JavaScript because the father of C-sharp was behind it. And it addressed real pain points that many were feeling. Within Microsoft, teams began using TypeScript for big projects, and outside Microsoft, influential figures took notice. Open source leader Miguel de Icaza praised the design, even as he critiqued tooling in the very early days. Momentum was building. 
The true turning point came with Google's Angular framework. Around 2014, the Angular team at Google was working on the next major version of their popular web framework. They felt the same strain with JavaScript and had started crafting their own superset language, AtScript, to bring in type annotations and other features. It looked like the web might end up with two competing typed JavaScript variants, one from Microsoft, one from Google, repeating the historical split of Java versus C-sharp. But in a twist, collaboration won out over competition. At a 2015 Angular conference, Google announced that instead of going it alone, they would adopt TypeScript. The TypeScript team worked with Google to incorporate Angular's ideas, like annotations, into TypeScript's roadmap. By TypeScript 1.5, the language included features that Angular's team needed, and Angular 2, released in 2016, was built entirely with TypeScript. This was huge. One of the world's biggest web frameworks effectively endorsed TypeScript for enterprise development. It validated TypeScript's approach and exposed it to thousands of developers. As one article put it, the Angular team realized TypeScript was the solution to their JavaScript concerns, and they dropped AtScript to join forces. TypeScript itself rapidly evolved through versions 2, 3, 4, and beyond, adding powerful features that kept developers happy. Generics, enums, async await, decorators, union types, and more. Features that made JavaScript programmers more productive at scale. By the early 2020s, TypeScript had fundamentally changed how large-scale JavaScript projects were built, Tech giants and startups alike were using it. Microsoft itself was all in. Tools like Visual Studio Code, Microsoft's hugely popular code editor, are largely written in TypeScript, proving it can handle big complex code bases. Google used TypeScript not only in Angular but in other web projects and libraries. Companies such as Airbnb made TypeScript the official language for their front-end code, migrating huge code bases to it. Slack adopted TypeScript for its desktop app to avoid runtime crashes. Looking at industry surveys, in a 2021 developer survey, TypeScript ranked among the top three most popular languages for developers, neck and neck with languages like Python. The once skeptical voices faded as more success stories emerged. TypeScript had gone from a solution looking for a problem to the solution everyone was looking for. At the heart of TypeScript is static typing, a way to declare what shape your data and code should have. In plain JavaScript, if you accidentally treat a number as a string, the program won't complain until it misbehaves at runtime. TypeScript changes that. It checks your code ahead of time, catching errors before they even reach execution. For example, if you try to call to lowercase on a number, TypeScript will immediately flag an error in your editor or during compilation. No need to run the code to spot mistakes, a game changer for development speed and confidence. Developers quickly realize that many bugs, which would have slipped through in JavaScript, get caught early by TypeScript's compiler. As one engineer put it, they learn to stop worrying and love the compiler because it acts like a friendly guardian, ensuring cleaner, more reliable code. As TypeScript's popularity soared, so did the size of projects using it, millions of lines of code, all depending on the TypeScript compiler. But with that success came a new challenge, performance. Developers working on massive code bases began noticing slow compile times and sluggish editor responsiveness, breaking the flow of development. The TypeScript team at Microsoft took these concerns seriously. While they continuously optimized the JavaScript-based compiler, they eventually hit a ceiling. Node.js high-level, garbage-collected nature simply couldn't keep up with the growing demands of ultra-large projects. By 2023, the JavaScript tooling world had seen a shift. Tools written in lower-level languages like Go and Rust were vastly outperforming traditional JavaScript-based compilers. Inspired by projects like EastBuild and SWC, Microsoft embarked on a bold journey, rewriting the TypeScript compiler in Go. Dubbed Project Corsa, this initiative promised 10x faster builds, dramatically improved editor performance, and reduced memory usage. On March 11, 2025, Anders Heilsberg announced TypeScript 7, the first version powered by the new Go-based compiler. For developers, this wasn't just an upgrade, it was a game-changer for productivity, unlocking new possibilities for real-time code analysis, faster CI-CD pipelines, and future AI-driven development tools. TypeScript's rise isn't just measured in surveys and GitHub stars, it's etched into the code bases of the world's biggest tech companies. Microsoft, the creator of TypeScript, embraced it fully. Visual Studio Code itself is built with TypeScript, proving that it can power even a complex, extensible code editor. Google followed suit, embedding TypeScript into Angular and its cloud SDKs, setting a precedent for industry-wide adoption. Airbnb, Slack, and Stripe all migrated millions of lines of JavaScript to TypeScript, citing fewer bugs, better maintainability, and smoother onboarding. In fact, Stripe engineers estimated 38% of their past bugs would have been prevented with TypeScript's static typing. The shift wasn't just about big companies. Frameworks like Next.js and Nest.js now default to TypeScript, making it the standard for modern JavaScript development. 
As TypeScript reshaped expectations, even JavaScript itself took notice. There's now a proposal to bring type annotations natively into the language. What started as a developer tool has become an industry-wide movement, changing how we write, maintain, and think about JavaScript. In just a decade, TypeScript has become a cornerstone of modern web development, reshaping JavaScript with better tooling, scalability, and reliability. Its Go-powered compiler ensures speed for massive projects, while its influence on JavaScript's future, like native type annotations, is undeniable. As AI-driven coding evolves, TypeScript remains at the forefront. If you haven't adopted it yet, now is the time. It's not just improving JavaScript, it's redefining how we build software.